Hello, welcome to our live OnePlus Nord review. Me, uh, James Peckham from Tech Radar, and John McCann, who you can see on the screen right now, deputy editor for Tech Radar, is uh, we're both here to talk about the OnePlus Nord, which you've been trying out, John, for the last few weeks. Um, so we are live on Facebook and YouTube at the moment. And if you've got any questions about the OnePlus Nord or about our review in general, uh, feel free to drop your comments in there and we'll get to them later on. In the video, we're going to talk through a load of the specs and a load of our opinions of the phone so far and where it stands in 2020 in the next uh, probably half an hour or so. Um, we also have our video producer in the chat there for um, for gathering all the questions up together. So we're going to have them all to look at at the very end. If you're watching this on demand afterwards, uh, then you've missed out and you won't be able to ask any questions. But um, be sure to put them in the chat and we may be able to get to them later along, along the line as well. Uh, and please also consider subscribing to our YouTube and our Facebook so you don't miss the next stream and you'll get a notification for that you may have had that already though if you're here so right now we've got all that boring stuff out of the way john um let's talk one plus nord let's do it let's do it james what yeah you like um can you just talk a little bit to start with about where this phone stands this is a bit of a strange one for one plus right yeah well it's almost one plus is going back to its roots although it was very adamant in the build-up that it, that's exactly not what it's doing um <laughs> and, it, and it just harmonizes nicely with the rest of its range but yeah basically when one plus first burst onto the scene in 2014 it had the one plus one it was billed as a flagship killer and it was going to take on the big names and bring a flagship experience at a much much lower price tag and to a certain extent, it did achieve it. It did make a splash. It did make some waves. It got us interesting, interested in the brand. And since then, the OnePlus prices have slowly crept up year on year. And the mm. past couple of years, OnePlus 7, 7T, and now the 8 series, we're looking at flagship price tags for OnePlus phones, which is not necessarily a bad thing. They're very good phones. And to an extent, they do justify those price tags. But OnePlus has always been a very sort of community and fan-driven brand. It has a good following behind it. and those who got on board with the brand early got on board because it was an affordable price point with great tech. And in recent years, it has moved away from that. So the OnePlus Nord is actually great news if you are an original OG OnePlus fan because mm. you're getting that affordable skew back again. And you know what? The OnePlus Nord does a pretty good job of being an affordable handset. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, let's start with this design then let's um if you can show it to the camera as well that'd be amazing oh, but um my, the so low should... quality camera on my laptop enjoy this but <laughs> blue, blue marble effect here yeah. i think people worry when it's a mid-range or an affordable phone that the design is going to feel cheap have you have you found so far that it that it feels like a, a cheaper affordable phone oneplus has made a big deal about the oneplus quality and it feeling like a flagship phone and it being a flagship phone at a lower price and you know while that's not true throughout the whole of the phone the design is one area where actually yeah it does look and feel like a properly good premium phone i've got the oneplus 8 pro here as well and side by side yes there's an obvious size mm. difference but you wouldn't say that one looks cheaper than the other when you see them in the flesh and you pick them up and you spin them around in your hand. You're like, okay, yeah, these are two well-made phones. There are a couple of hints, though, on the Nord that it isn't quite the same tier as the 8 series. On the front, the screen, it's flat. And it doesn't curve around the edges as it yeah. does on the 8 series, uh, a more premium feature, slightly more expensive to make and produce. Um, so it's, it's flat, which means that while it has curved edges on the back, it doesn't have curved edges on the rear. So it does just feel a bit chunkier in your hand just because of that aesthetic difference. Um, there is also a slender plastic rim that runs around the outside of the screen between the Gorilla Glass 5 and the metal frame of the phone. Uh, if you run your finger over it, it's noticeable. It does catch your finger. It's not like the smooth edges of the more premium phones. And it, it is that just slight little hint that, you know, dings a little node in your brain that goes, yeah, you know, yeah. th th this is a small feature. But it, it, I am nitpicking here. It's t it, it, the minor things. Another slight annoyance personally for me from a purely aesthetic viewpoint is the factory fitted screen protector, which is great. Don't get me wrong, especially for those who like to sling their bag, their phone in a bag or in a pocket mm. with the keys. Having that protection already there, it is noticeable, though. It, it's another noticeable ridge around the screen and around that dual camera cutout on the front. Uh, you can easily remove it, uh, but you do at your own risk. However, you do get a case in the box with it as well. Uh, it's, uh, it's relatively see-through. It allows you to still show off the design, uh, but it does give you rear protection, obviously, but it does 
uh, bulge out on the corners. So if you were to place the phone face down on a surface, uh, the screen wouldn't be sitting directly on it. So there is a bit of protection built in. And if you'd rather a cleaner looking screen experience, you can just peel that off, but you do so at your own risk. But overall design, it's very nice. Uh, for those with larger hands, it's easy to use one-handed. If you've got smaller hands, you might really struggle to reach the top of the screen with your thumb. Um, so you might want to employ your second hand there but it is overall quite nice there is no headphone jack for anyone hoping on that that uh, that ship has sailed i think mm. OnePlus fans uh the the only port you do get is a USB C on the bottom obviously for charging or connecting to a computer or anything else there is a dual sim tray and there's a speaker as well but that's about it uh apart, apart from you've got volume on one side you've got power below the alert slider on the right Great. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the screen then. So it's a six point four four inch screen. That sounds like a that sounds like a large phone, really, on paper. Are you finding it? Are you finding that the screen is still a good quality considering the price of the phone? Yes, it's an AMOLED display, OLED display. You know, AMOLED yeah. is it a real thing or not? It's just marketing speed. But it's an OLED display, which means it's colourful, it's bright. There's a four, no, no, there's not 40, 90 hertz refresh rate on that, which means that if you scroll through Twitter or Instagram, the whole movement is really nice and smooth. Most phones, especially if you're upgrading from one, two or three years old now, your phone is probably running at about 60 hertz. And well, you know, for, yeah. uh, for, for me, for you, for everyone, you know, 60 hertz is fine. It's, it's not an issue issue but it, if you were to put it side by side with the nord or any phone you know 90 hertz is becoming more common now oneplus certainly isn't isn't alone there and we've even seen 120 hertz on some displays but 90 hertz as, as you scroll around as you move around the interface everything just feels just a tad more fluid smoother less juddery and while these all minor points it makes for an experience which just feels a little bit more premium, a little bit more slick under finger. So the screen is very good. It's full HD plus. So you're looking 1080p. We're not looking at the sort of 2K QHD screens. Again, you see on the top tier, this is, is this is, remember, an affordable smartphone. So don't yeah. expect craziness there. There is support for HDR10. So if you're watching Netflix uh, and there's HDR support on your particular video content, then you get that as well, which really enhances what's going on, on screen. Also, there's enough space there when it comes to gaming. Uh, enough you find I've been playing PUBG on it. You know, there's more than enough uh, brightness and resolution and HDR and smooth graphics there to to keep me interested. Although I'm saying HDR, I couldn't turn on HDR or 4K mode in the settings. It's just not available on mm. this phone at the moment. You can get up to HD graphics, uh, but everything worked nicely. Brilliant. Um, yeah, and we've seen full HD resolution on flagship phones within 2019 and 2020. So, like, this is a phone that's going to be half the price of that. So, yeah, that's not a. Uh, it's not a. That's not a. A breaking uh, feature of that is it um let's move on to camera so there are lots of cameras the most cameras that we've ever seen on a oneplus phone if i'm correct oh yes can you run us through uh how you've experienced like how it's been when you've been using them and uh what exactly you're going to get with this as well cool so you've got four on the front no you've got four on the back and <laughs> two on the front yeah Getting my front and my back's mixed up very easy to do um so around the back the main sensor is a 48 megapixel sony imx 586 sensor now that's the same flagship camera that you'll find on the oneplus 8 so yeah. that's a nice feature that oneplus has uh tiered down to the nord so you're getting a main decent quality camera straight up and you know take it out and about fire up the camera app snap away if it's good quality light outside you're going to get decent images out of it they're maybe not quite as colorful as some handsets samsung is a great example where they really sort of when it comes to the image processing side really bump up the colors for a sort of zestier image that catches mm. the eye and while the nord doesn't have that sort of instant allure it is technically uh, closer to reality uh, and of course you can always dive into an editor to to zhuzh it up a bit that 48 megapixel sensor is actually default set to take 12 megapixel cameras when you first fire open the app uh, and that's there's a couple of reasons for that first of all a 48 megapixel image is about three times the file size of a 12 megapixel image so if you're taking lots of photos in all 48 meg you're going to start using up that storage quite a lot and secondly 12 megapixels actually for most uses especially if you're looking to post to social where image quality is generally downgraded as you upload there's no need for 48 megapixels there it just makes your yeah. up upload quicker it means you'll be using less data when you're uploading it um so yeah so it's an easy toggle though in the app uh at the top just tap where it says 12m give you an option to 
to switch to 48 and, and vice versa. You've then got three other sensors on the rear. There's a eight megapixel wide angle camera, the ultra wide, uh, mm -hmm. 119 degrees field of view, which gives you a nice wide shot. So if you've got a nice sweeping landscape in front of you, you can tap on that to get more into the picture. OnePlus has said it's worked really hard on reducing the amount of distortion around the edge of these wide images. A lot of ultra wide cameras on phones can end up giving you sort of a fisheye effect where the sort of the, the edges of the images are a little bit more stretched than the sort of in focus middle. Yeah. Uh, and while improvements have been made, it's not perfect. You, if you look, you can still see that sort of bit of distortion, but you know, it's not as bad as some phones. Uh, uh, OnePlus saying it's better than the iPhone 11. Yeah, it's on par maybe, um, mm. but it is still a very good camera. You've got a macro camera, which seems maybe a slightly excessive addition, two megapixels, so it's not crazy high resolution. It just means you can get extra close up to, in my case, my Lego models and get a cheeky face of the car driver that I have on my desk because, you know, that's what I do. But <laughs> it's... It, it, some people may find it useful. It's not something that we particularly went to that often, really. Uh, and yeah, is if you're being pessimistic, you'd say you know they've just added it so they could say they've got six rather than five cameras. <laughs> and the final sensor is a depth sensor, five megapixel, and that's used in the portrait mode, that background blur effect, and that does work nicely. The Nord does a good job of recognizing the foreground with the background. Although with this lockdown hairstyle, sometimes the uh, the extra curly edges can it can get a little bit confused just defining those but if you've got a much <laughs> neater uh hairstyle then it'll probably be just fine around the front you've got 32 megapixel main camera Oof. for your selfies oh exactly <laughs> and uh that again produces nice bright clear image rich selfies for all mm -hmm. your social needs there is an ultra wide option on the front which is that second camera at eight megapixels uh not as wide field of view as the rear 105 degrees this time but it means you can get more of your buddies in or your family or your pets or whoever else you want to jump into the selfie with or if you're at somewhere nice which isn't your house because you're in lockdown and you want to <laughs> get the background in with you you can uh the shots with the ultra wide camera on the front and the back they they aren't as good quality lower megapixels they also oh. come out a touch darker uh, and a little muddier so in terms of quality you're much better off using the main cameras on the front and the back the ultra wide is only really there if you really want to stretch your your ambition would um before we move on to battery life in a moment would you you've used the oneplus 8 pro would you say it, it's comparable to that or are we talking is this a much lower lower level quality camera i'd say there's not a huge difference. Mm. I'd say the 8 Pro probably still just edges it. It's got a higher chipset Snapdragon 865 in the Pro, yeah, um, which has comes with a better ISP image processing, so it can do a bit more with each image that it captures. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you compare this to sort of the other mid-range sort of rivals, LG Velvet, Motorola Edge, iPhone SE, uh, Google Pixel 3a, 3a XL from last year. Mm. You know, it's in or about there. There's also Nightscape, which is their own night mode, uh, mm. which can do a good job depending on how my, how dark it is. You, I went out for a couple of late night walks when it was, you know, pitch black to about 11 o'clock at night. Uh, in areas where there is some light, you know, a couple of street lights, then actually Nightscape does a really good job of, of harnessing the light that it can and improving the overall image um however in really dark areas where there's the, the, there's much less sort of light for it to grab onto it, it struggles a bit more you know and i by struggle I, i'm comparing it to the the google's pixel yeah. um night sight feature which can seemingly pull light when there isn't any uh, and do it so it, it's not that level that magic. Of, of, of of night photography but again let's consider the price Let's consider the mm -hmm. where it sits in the market. You know, it's nice to see a decent night mode. And you can see some of my example night shots between it being off and on in my review on the site. Brilliant. Um, so let's move on to battery life. That's going to be a bit major thing for a lot of people and something that OnePlus has generally been quite good on in the last few generations of its handsets. Mm -hmm. um, again, you've been in lockdown, so you've probably not been testing the battery as much as you normally would be with commuting and doing all that kind of thing. I, but I how, don't worry. How I have much? taken plenty of time during the workday to not do any work and play games and stream hours of music and watch videos. So, good work. Um, yeah, while I may not be doing my three-hour round commute each day, I am making mm. sure that... Uh, it was thoroughly tested. Uh, you get a decent sized battery, 4,119, 15, it's something. 15, yeah. 
there we are there you go but 4100 basically milliamp battery mm -hmm. which is you know par for the course uh at this range and it will last you a day don't expect more than that this is a phone you will have to charge each night yeah uh, which isn't a big deal um but obviously we'd always like a bit more but the nord isn't going to give you two day battery life it's probably not going to even give you day and a half battery life mm -hmm. um there isn't wireless charging as well so anyone who just likes the convenience of popping the handset down on a pad leaving yeah. it and coming back to it that's not an option again not a huge issue at the mid-range at this price point for now but considering the OnePlus 8 series does have wireless charging you know there's a reason there's a small reason that maybe you'd, you'd spend more on on the bigger handsets there uh you do get fast charging OnePlus is warp 30t that gives you naught to 70 percent in about half an hour that does work uh you have to use the uh uh block in the box uh and you get a cable as well but you can use any USB C cable but yeah that charges it up uh too sweet uh so if you are about to go out on a night out or you're about to i don't know get on a plane or something giving it a quick blast for half an hour will we'll basically see you through. A nice added element there is that the charger's in the box as well. A lot of phones that you buy at the moment, including including the iPhone, um, doesn't always come with a fast charger included in the box. So that's a nice little element of it. Um, cool. Let's move on to performance and software. Obviously, being a mid-range phone, we are not expecting the top end's uh, performance here. And you said you've been playing PUBG on this phone. Um, how have you found it in day-to-day -day use? Yeah, there's no obvious performance issues with this phone, whether mm -hmm. it's yeah, PUBG or I've got six different social networks open or I'm snapping loads of photos or anything you can pretty much throw at it. It will handle pretty comfortably. Mm -hmm. It uses Qualcomm Snapdragon 765G chipset, which is uh, the firm's sort of mid to high end chipset, which sits yeah. between its 600 series and its 800 series. And that's, yeah. In, in that middle ground between the mid and the high market. Uh, so it does very well there. Uh, yeah, day to day usage, you're not going to be like, oh, this is slow. If you sat down and really drilled into it with phones which had higher chipsets, and yeah, those mm. would be faster than this, but you, nobody really does that in day to day usage. So yeah, there's more than enough here. It will run your games, you can do your photos, it will run apps, load times are pretty good. Again, that. 90 hertz screen just makes everything feel just a little bit more fluid on the finger. There's plenty mm. of RAM as well. So the standard model comes with 8 gig of RAM with 128 gigabytes of storage. Uh, but you can pay a little bit more and you can get 12 gig of RAM with 256 gigabytes storage, which is, yeah, 12 gig of RAM in a phone is, is a bit excessive. But if you really are into your gaming, um, yep. there's a fanatic mode for gamers as well, which turns on your do not disturb so you don't get notifications in the way or channel more processing power to the game and de-optimize other areas of the phone so to increase uh, to improve your latency during gameplay as well. So there are ways to you know really channel that performance and make the most of it depending on what you're doing. Brilliant. Um, and also, it's a 5G phone. This is probably the most affordable 5G phone that you can buy at the moment for a lot of people, um, or it's in that ballpark anyway. It's one of the cheaper 5G phones. Um, can you talk a little bit about that as well? I certainly can. Yeah, it's nice to see 5G filtering down the price tiers. And yeah, mm. this, as you've said, this is one of, one of the cheapest 5G phones. It's not mm. the cheapest. There are a couple out there. Uh, but in terms of being relatively widely available in Europe and India, at least, mm -hmm. then it's nice to see 5G this. I mean, I haven't been able to test 5G because where I am hasn't been graced with 5G <laughs> just yet. And I don't Same think with you me. have either. <laughs> no. but yeah, so it, it's actual 5G performance. Well, we'll yeah. definitely try that out when we can get back to uh, a bit more normality. And we'll definitely update the review with that. But there shouldn't be too much of an issue in terms of connectivity in general. I've not had any issues with that in terms of Wi-Fi and moving between Wi-Fi and 4G LTE. It's all been fine and I've had good speeds. Brilliant. Cool. Right. Let's get on to the, the thing everyone really wants to know about then price. Um, it's a mid-range phone as we've spoken about, but what are the what are the exact prices you can expect? And is everyone that's watching this video right now going to be able to buy this phone? I, I know the answer to that and it's a bit of a disappointment for some. What a great looking question. Yes, uh, <laughs> the OnePlus Nord price starts at, if you're in the UK, £379. If you're in Europe, €399. Euros. If mm -hmm. you're in India, 24999 rupees. And that's for your base model. In Europe, the base model is the 8 gig of RAM, 128 gig of storage. In India, the base model is 6 gig of RAM, 64 gig of storage. Uh, right. There is also, as I've mentioned, 12 gig and 256 combination of ram and storage so in the uk you're looking at 469 pounds and in europe 499 pounds why have i not said anything about the us or other markets well at the moment it doesn't look like oneplus has any plans to sell it 
officially in North America mm. or anywhere else outside of Europe, India, China, Hong Kong, and Malaysia, I think, at the moment. It could well come to more markets soon, but OnePlus hasn't confirmed anything. And it's been quite sketchy around US or North American availability. Yeah. There was, it's not going to be available. And then there was reports that actually it will be available, but in a really limited beta program sort of way. Mm. Um, so, but it doesn't sound like it's going to be on general sale in North America, but there is a small chance that a small subset of people may be able to get a handset through some mm. sort of thing that OnePlus runs, but it's not clear. So, yeah, if you're in the UK, though, if you're in one of about 30 European countries, if you're in India, it's going to be easily available from major retailers and from the OnePlus website as well. Uh, and the official release date is August 4th. So we're not too far away from that. Uh, but OnePlus, it looks like it's going to be running some pop-up events before that as well if you wanted to try and stake a claim to a handset. Yeah, some uh, lockdown pop-up events, though, so you may struggle to actually <laughs> attend any of those. Um, brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, so last question is essentially, who would you say this phone is for? This is a, this is a, The mid-range is becoming a much more exciting place in, in the last 12 months or so, maybe in the, even the last 24, 24 months, um, with things like the new iPhone SE and this and the Google Pixel 3a and a variety of other handsets like that. Why should you buy a OnePlus Nord over that? As you said, it's a very competitive market now, this mid-range. Mm. And actually, we're spoiled for choice. We've got great quality handsets packing loads of features for, yeah, really interesting price tags. And ones that are making us maybe rethink, do we need flagship phones? You know, why are they so expensive? Are they value for money? Because you've got all of these handsets now around this price point, which are just doing great work. So the OnePlus Nord, would I recommend it? Yes, it, in short, it's, it looks great. It works really well. It's got plenty of camera options. You know, it might be slightly overkill in the number of camera options, but if you're into photography, there is plenty for you to play with there. The screen is bright, it's big, it's clear. It, as OnePlus says, it's pretty much everything you want from a phone, which is mm. kind of a cheesy line, but it does sort of have a point. It's, it's focused on core areas. Sure, battery life could be better. It would be nice to see wireless charging. But overall, it's a very nice phone. If you're a OnePlus fan uh, and you've not been a fan of their price rises, then this is really going to appease you and will hopefully get you excited about the brand again. It brings OnePlus back into the heartland where it's once started and it now seems like a place where it can play. It has now more brand recognition than it did six years ago. Definitely. So it's, so it's a really interesting place. So if you're looking for a, a mid-range handset, uh, which has a, a bunch of flagship features, but obviously not the flagship price tag, then the Nord is a great option. Fantastic. Right. Thank you very much, John. Don't leave yet. We're going to move on to some questions that we've had in the Facebook chat and the YouTube chat. Ooh. And I'm bringing our video producer, Matt Phillips, uh, is going to run us through some of the questions that you've been jotting down. Thank you for all your questions so far. Yeah, absolutely echo that. Um, there are so many questions flying around in the yes. chat. Some great questions. Yes. Um, there's been a bit of a theme as well, like how does this, how does the OnePlus Nord compare to X phone? So mm. I thought mm. I'd set up a little quick fire round for you, John. So I'm going to oh, throw goodness. a load of phones at you and you're going to tell me which one you'd go for yourself. The OnePlus well, this should Nord. Be interesting. Well, yeah, we'll see. Uh, so first one then from Yusuf, uh, OnePlus Nord versus Xiaomi Mi 10 Lite. What up, Yusuf? Uh, I'm not sure what price difference there is in your region i don't think it, the me 10 note the me note 10 Lite is actually available in the uk at the moment Fair they enough. are quite similar on a spec sheet level mm. however the nord has a slightly better chipset uh, it's got the 765g versus the 730 uh, in the in the xiaomi so in terms of performance the nord should be slightly better but you know the difference is going to be minimal the oneplus also offers you that 12 gig of ram uh, option, mm -hmm. whereas the Mi 10, no, the Mi Note, oh, I, that phone with a really long, complicated <laughs> name, uh, maxes out at eight gig of RAM. And again, if you're a bit of a storage fiend as well, the Nord goes up to 256, where mm -hmm. the Xiaomi only goes up to 128 gig. Fantastic stuff. What about the Real Me, Real Me X3 versus the Ooh. Nord? The Realme X3. I don't know too much about the X3, but I do know a bit about the Realme X50 
5G, which comes in just below the Nord in terms of price point with mm -hmm. a very similar spec sheet. There's a couple of savings that they've made. For example, they use an LCD rather than an AMOLED screen, so not quite as zappy under, under your eyes, for example. Um, but yeah, Realme is also an interesting brand. It's sort of a couple of years behind where OnePlus is now, but right. it's one of those brands that is making good quality and affordable handsets. There are a few small compromises, as I've said, so you might want to just check the reviews and uh, and read up a bit and there is that price balance you know it it's cheaper but why is it cheaper it's not necessarily it's a bad thing because it's cheaper but it really think about what's important to you from your smartphone and what you use your phone for the most and then base it off that for sure, for sure. And then we had this one from two different people, Aslan and Ha, in the YouTube chat. Uh, the Samsung A71. A71. So I was at the launch uh, of the Galaxy A series, I don't know, maybe two years ago now, the sort of mm. relaunch. It was in Milan, and they're making a big splash. And yeah, it was Samsung basically trying to do a one plus they were trying to get people excited about their mid-range proposition which you know had kept going over the years it has you know samsung has had a full suite of phones for a long time sure. um, but they sort of disappeared into the background a little bit versus you know their galaxy s series and the note series which really take the the limelight so the a series was sort of a, a reinvigoration of the mid-range for samsung and they made a big splash of it and they've been trialing flagship features but on the A series first. So it's an interesting one and it's another brand that's trying to bring flagship features to the mid range again to challenge people like OnePlus. Mm -hmm. So versus the A71 and the Nord, it's a it's a tough one. Uh, again, very similar on paper. The Nord has a better chip 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 <laughs> set. That's a better chip chip set i don't know what's going on with my words today <laughs> uh again the samsung uses the 730 the nord is on 765 so in terms of performance and maybe slightly more longevity there mm -hmm. it's just got newer tech under the hood which should help you out samsung's camera proposition has always been very good it's got a great heritage at the flagship level in terms of its camera quality so you can expect decent photography from the a71 as well that's got four cameras a la the Nord as well. There's also uh, a front-facing camera, uh, 32 megapixel on the A71. So basically what I'm getting at is they're very similar. Battery life is probably a touch better on the Samsung. Sure. But you may prefer the look and the feel of the Nord. Again, pricing-wise, I think the Nord is cheaper than the mm -hmm. A71, and there's not too much yeah. to choose. So again, have a think about what's important for you. And then finally, then I'll give you a difficult one. The iPhone SE versus the Pixel 3a versus the OnePlus Nord. <laughs> so the SE is an interesting phone. It's something that almost is unlike Apple at the minute because mm. it's got its suite of 11, of 11 series. They're premium phones with premium price tags, all display screens, face unlock, etc. And then bam, you've got the iPhone SE, which is great. It's what people have been calling for, a smaller iPhone with a lower price tag right into the mid-range, an exciting proposition, and really, again, mixes up that mid-range. It's more expensive than the Nord. Its design, you may find, is a bit old mm -hmm. because it has it brings back the bezels and it brings yeah. back Touch ID uh, button, home button under the, under the screen in that large, chunky bezel. So in terms of looks, maybe, maybe that's... That's a look that you prefer. Maybe you miss bezels, in which case the iPhone SE is one of the few phones offering you that style. Mm -hmm. However, the Nord, that's the all-screen experience. You've got the cutout for the front-facing cameras there. You have an in-display fingerprint scanner, so it's still on the front. It's just within the screen, so you get more screen real estate there. So it's an interesting one. However, you know, if you're an iPhone user and you just want a nice upgrade, which isn't going to cost you the earth, the iPhone SE is sort of a sensible upgrade, especially if you're currently rocking an iPhone 6, 6S or 7. Moving to the iPhone SE is actually going to be an improvement for you, even though it's a mid-range phone and those were flagships of their time, because you're going to get a much, you're going to get the latest processor from Apple. You've got the latest software on there. So it's going to be a really nice package. You're going to get a decent warranty. It will have a decent lifetime to it. And Apple phones always hold their value well. So even if you hold on to the SE for a year or so, you, you're going to get a pretty good price for it if you come to trade it in. The Nord, on the other hand, it's cheaper to start with, so that's always a bonus. It's technically got a bit more feature-rich about it. It looks a bit better, in my opinion. It's got a slightly nicer design. Um, but yeah, it really comes down to what do you prefer, iPhone or Android? Fantastic stuff. And then a couple of quick-fire questions then that are just about kind of specs so we can answer them nice and quick. Uh, does it have stereo speakers from Smurfy on Instagram? 
Uh, yes, kind of. It's got a bottom firing speaker, and then it's got a uh, speaker built into the earpiece area. They're very, they're okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's easy to cover up a bottom firing speaker with your hands when you're holding it in landscapes or sure. when you're gaming. So you know, when I'm playing PUBG, I can hardly hear someone shooting at me, which is a bit of an issue. Um, you know, so people like Sony tend to do better with these because you get dual face, dual front facing speakers, mm-hmm. which far all the sound at you harder to cover up. Uh, the speakers are fine, but I would recommend headphones. Yeah, for sure. And then what OS is it running from Mario on Facebook? So it's Android 10, and then it's got uh, OnePlus's Oxygen OS 10.5 interface laid on top of that. It pretty much looks like stock Android, uh, but OnePlus will tell you it's got over 300 optimizations, and there's a bunch of customization options, if those are your thing, that you can dive into in the settings menu, uh, allowing you to sort of personalize it a little bit more than stock Android would. But if you're familiar with Android, this won't be too much of a departure. It's not that much of a heavy UI makes sense, and then jumping back to Instagram, Nitin said ear plug not available, right? I'm guessing they mean headphone jack, but I think there is I no mention he- this. Yeah, there is no headphone jack, and you don't get a set of headphones in the box, except if you're in which country. Uh, take a guess, which country will get headphones in the box, and everywhere else will miss out? What do you reckon, Come James? On. Have a guess. Um, I would I would assume India because that's the place that uh, that OnePlus is really trying to push the phone. Incorrect. So the only <laughs> okay. place uh, where the OnePlus Nord will come with bundled headphones is France. Why? Why? <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's something I'll have to go away and find out. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. Um, and then we a few people asking this question, but L Silver on Instagram, Gabrielle on Instagram as well. Um, a little bit of confusion in the chat around the frame. Is it plastic? Is it metal? What right. are we dealing okay. with? Okay. So it's a bit of both. It, you've got the screen. I mean, this probably is not going to show it in the best light, but you've got the screen and there's a thin plastic black bezel that runs around it. Mm-hmm. And then you've got a metal frame that sandwiches the device. And then you've got Gorilla Glass 5 on the back. Makes sense. Hopefully that cleared up some of the confusion. I saw people chatting in the chat about that earlier. Uh, On YouTube from Dan, he says, do you think we need a case or screen protector? Great question. How clumsy are you, Dan? Uh, Would be my (laughs) first answer. Also, it's it's a slippery little sausage, this one, as are most glass-backed phones uh, these days. It is not much grip in there. And uh, the camera block on the back is is quite chunky it's quite the protrusion mm. and because it's not in the middle like it is on the 8 series here ta-da, um it means if you put it back down on a on a on a surface and then you go typing on it it wobbles because of that protrusion on the side the good news is you get a case included in the box lovely so that's, that's good and it shows off the design and it's a uh, relatively slim fit but that means two things. First of all, you get some protection and you get some grip uh, if you are someone who's a little bit more clumsy and it still manages to show off the color and the design of the mm-hmm. phone uh, while giving you that protection. But also, it flattens the back so there's no wobble. There's no the, the camera bump is no longer an issue so you can put it flat down and you can tap away while it's resting on a surface and it's not going to wobble for you. Another interesting thing, and it's not something I've seen on a case for a while, especially one included in the box, is uh, there's a little flap over the USB-C port. And again, I'm not sure how easy this is going to see, but it it means that it just stops you know dust and lint collecting in that port. What it does mean, though, is it's, it, it's a bit trickier to plug it in at night when I'm half asleep and trying to fiddle with the cable and then trying to hold the phone but also trying to undo the flap as i hold the cable and put it all in it's a minor annoyance uh yeah but yeah it, it, again it, i i was speaking to my dad actually the other day and it, he has an iphone he was saying oh my iphone is uh it, it's not really charging anymore um it, you know i plug it in do i need a new cable i said try cleaning out the the yeah. lightning port i've run into that issue yeah yeah, with what? And I said, you know, something like a cotton bud, something very soft that's not going to scratch it, but you've probably just got a bit of dust. So he said he cleaned it out and he did get some gummins out and it's been charging fine ever mm-hmm. since. So, you know, there is a, especially Lightning and USB-C, they're sort of ports which are pretty open and ready to 
collect any sort of dust that may be knocking about. So to have a nice little flap over it uh, might just help you in the long run. Absolutely. And then we had a question from Power Shield on YouTube, and maybe James, you can jump in on this one as well. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure how sort of how much this matters, but we'll see. Um, what are the privacy concerns considering OnePlus is a Chinese company? Will they be in the same? Yeah, will they be in the same boat as Huawei? come a year time a year's time or whatever um well, sorry you go ahead john no you go you go i've talked for <laughs> um i from my personal standpoint i'm not i don't see them being the same boat as huawei this um in the next year mm-hmm. the huawei the huawei ban in the us has been a particularly political issue with that company and um that has been the restrictions that they've then been put under so they're no, no longer able to use google mobile services at um, that's a very complicated topic that we can't really. We could, but then again, we couldn't predict that happening. Um, sure. Over a, over a year ago, either. So I don't think we're in the place to be able to predict that. Um, so far, in our expert opinion, there doesn't seem to be any privacy issues. But um, but we're also not really the place to comment on that either. I would mm-hmm. say. Would you agree, John? Yeah, it's a tricky one and something which is sort of out of our wheelhouse because, yeah, the, the legal complexities of it and the political complexities of it are, are difficult to monitor. There's no, sure. there's nothing suggesting at the moment that any other Chinese phone manufacturer is, is under threat at the minute. And there are plenty of Chinese phone manufacturers. I mean, we've mentioned some of them, Realme, Xiaomi, OnePlus yeah. today. So at the moment, there doesn't seem to be an issue, but we can't provide any guarantees. Fantastic stuff um so johnny ban on facebook says uh what are the memory and color options so i think we chatted about the memory options hopefully you got that answered for you johnny um but color oh, options I don't think we recap. all right go for it yeah. man. go for it i'll recap um so if you're in europe um then your entry level device is eight gig of ram and 120 and 128 gigabyte of storage or you can opt for 12 gig of ram and 256 gigabyte of storage. If you're in India, there's actually a third option available there, which is six gig of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage. It comes in two colors, gray onyx, which is a gray silvery, and blue marble, which is the one I have here. And it's the it's the color I prefer, but mm-hmm. I, I'm a big fan of, of loud, bright colors. So this suits my personality quite nicely. But yeah, there's a, there's a gray onyx for those who maybe don't want to be quite so garish. Fantastic stuff. And then this, this one came up a couple of times as well, but I didn't mention it in the verses. Um, is the Nord a viable option or should I go for the 7T? It's a little bit more expensive, but still. That's mm, from a great question. Uh, I'm going to butcher your name if I try and say it, but Patel in the YouTube chat. Thank you very much. Cool. I, the good thing about the 7T is that it has come down in price. And as you said, it's now only slightly more expensive than the Nord. And you're technically getting a, a better phone in terms of chipset. You're getting an 800 series Snapdragon versus a 700 series in the Nord. It's a nice looking device. It's very powerful. It works well. However, on the flip side, the Nord, it's eight months nine months, 10 months, almost newer. Mm -hmm. Uh, And from launch day, so from August 4th, OnePlus guarantees it will get a minimum of two major Android software updates. Uh, It will get, sorry, it will get major Android software updates for two years from August 4th this year, which means the Nord will easily get Android 11 and Android 12, which will likely arrive at the end of 2021. So it gives you a good bit of future proofing. While a similar guarantee is made with the 7T, obviously, that launched eight, nine months ago. Mm-hmm. So you're slightly behind, which means that you may it, it, its support may run out quicker than the Nord. So if you're looking for a phone that's gonna be a, gonna give you a bit more longevity, two years minimum of software updates, three years minimum of security updates on the Nord from date of launch, then you've got better long-term security. Um, however, if you're looking to change your phone every sort of 18 months to two years, then maybe you'd go for the 70 just to have that little bit, bit of extra power under the hood if you're into gaming or you do like a lot of photography editing. However, for more casual users, the Nord is probably going to suffice. Fantastic stuff. Last couple of questions then. And speaking of photography, look at that segue. Uh, Robert on Facebook says, what is the night mode on the camera like? Is it anywhere near as good as the Google phones? Cool. So I mentioned this briefly earlier, mm. but Nightscape is good depending on your nighttime environment. You go out, I've done some late night walks, you find an area, 
so I went to sort of a church and it had some lighting on it. There was like a light above the door and a couple of lights in the graveyard. Nothing too crazy, but there were light sources for the camera to draw on. And from that, it was able to give me a really nice image, much clearer, uh, much posed than from the main camera without night mode. However, you go somewhere much darker. Uh, I, I managed to find a car wash on the side of a road with maybe... Uh, one street lamp but not in shot and further up the road so the light source was minimal and nightscape struggled a bit more to do anything more than the main camera could with mm -hmm. just plain hdr compared to sort of google's pixel algorithms then it's not quite as good as that um the google stuff is very clever and it's almost all software based because it does it for a single camera as well which makes it even more impressive so if you're looking for like some of the best night mode action then the, the Google Pixel or even the, the Huawei on the P30 and the P40s, their night modes are also very good. Again, these are flagship phones with flagship price tags. The Nord isn't, so you know, you're not going to get the same level, but it does make a difference nightscape versus the standard camera mode. So, yeah, worth playing with. Sure, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but in your full written review on site, you've got some camera comparisons, right? Mm -hmm. So yep. definitely worth going and checking out techradar.com if you want to see those sort of camera comparisons side by side there. Um, and then final question then that we'll close out on, and James, I think you can jump in on this one as well. Um, mm -hmm. Is the OnePlus future-proof enough? Like, can I use it for five years and not expect to need to upgrade? So maybe chat a little bit about what's sort of on the horizon, what might be coming out, um, and whether or not you think this phone is sort of a, a good investment, I guess, long term. Um, I think that question is not specifically about the Nord. If you're if you're asking for a phone that can work for five more years, I think um, a lot of people are used to upgrading their phones in a two two yearly cycle at the moment. Mm. Um, the OnePlus Nord is probably a good place to go if you are looking for a phone that's going to last that amount of time. Um, there is, as John has said, there is no guarantee that you're going to keep getting software updates after two years. You will get guaranteed two years of software updates and three years of um, security updates. Um, so but then that's pretty much across the board with most handsets and even you can even get less with some android phones as well um if you are looking for a device that's probably going to last that amount of time maybe look at the iphone the iphones are sometimes a little bit better supported and for example the 2016 iphone se is still getting um still getting regular uh, ios 13 updates at the moment and i'm pretty sure it still gets ios 14 when that launches later this year so um may if that's something you're really um concerned about maybe look towards that and even the new iphone se probably is um is a great option for that because we would expect that to be supported for a little bit longer as well um yeah. How, however, um, the Nord also is 5G. No, no iPhone at the moment True. supports 5G. So when that new network does eventually hit wherever you're living again, as we said, it hasn't hit us quite yet, unfortunately. But when it does, if you do have the Nord, then you know that your phone will be able to take advantage of the best network speed straight away. If you were to buy an iPhone, for example, this year, even if it was an old one or a new one, two years time and 5g arrives wherever you live you won't be able to take advantage of those 5g speeds because you've got a phone that doesn't support it so that's an extra bit of longevity with the nord is that it's got that 5g support plus the software and the security update guarantees fantastic yeah, we have stuff. to uh, sorry have to, wait for september to, have to wait for september to see if apple do a 5g iphone but yeah. sorry matt go ahead i think it's relatively likely right <laughs> yeah pre pretty sad um there is one more question just come in from Emily on Facebook. So I know I said it would be the last question, but we'll do one more. Um, would this be an upgrade from the OnePlus <laughs> S? Is that S or 5? Um, or will I be disappointed? Previously had OnePlus 1, 2, 3, 4, then 5. So, okay. Would it be an upgrade from the OnePlus 5? Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Simple there that. we go. Nice yeah, yeah, and you, easy for you, Emily. You, you definitely notice the difference in terms of performance, design, camera ability, everything. It, it's absolutely an upgrade fantastic stuff well guys thanks for joining us in the chat you've been awesome and we've had so many questions really appreciate it um live streams are relatively new for us but clearly you guys have enjoyed this or at least i hope you have um so please do consider subscribing following us on facebook subscribing on youtube hitting that bell um and you can join us for our next live stream which in fact will be very soon tonight we are live streaming Ooh. myself james uh adam from the site and tom from the site uh, we are live streaming warzone trying to get them w's tonight I think it starts at 8 p.m., I want to say. I'm so sorry, Matt. I'm so sorry that you're going to have to carry me. Yeah, my back's going to be sore tomorrow. But if you, if you fancy <laughs> tuning in and cheering us on, we'd really appreciate that. Um, but until next time, I guess, remember to go to techradar.com and you can read John's full review and see those camera comparisons with checking out. Thanks for joining me, guys. Peace. Bye-bye.